Oil fights oil. Fact. That is what I want to talk about today. You've heard me keep saying it. Oil fights oil. And so today what I really want to do is clarify that in a skincare world and make sure you know exactly why and exactly what to do, what to avoid, what I'm really talking about. Please, YouTube, give this a thumbs up, subscribe below, send it on to any of your friends that have oily skin, spots, blackheads, or think they do. Um, and we're gonna go and really work out what it is I keep referring to. Let's go from the top then with really the science of it. There is no getting away from this. Anyone who has oily skin and spots is terrified of oil. They think that it's gonna give them more spots and blackheads and more shine. I get that, like I've been there. I was that late teens, 20 year old. My forehead was always spotty. I hated it. I would have never put oil on it because at that point I just didn't, didn't know enough. But the science is essentially oil molecules are best broken down with oil molecules. They disperse and get taken off a surface best with an oil compared to anything that is water-based. And when you look at most skincare for oily, spotty skin, things like anything from your clearer cells and oxy tens in the UK upwards, they all tend to be water-based. So you've got water trying to fight against oil, which is not a great competition. The oil is going to win. And then what they do is they pack it full of alcohol to help the process. And what the alcohol does is then really strips your skin and all over your skin, at the base of every hair underneath the layer, you can see you have what's called a sebaceous gland. It basically looks like a scrotum sac off the bottom of each hair. It's really delightful. And when you're teaching it to 16 year old beauty therapists, it's just like massively gonna make them giggle and snigger at teacher. Um, and from said scrotum sac, basically you get this sebaceous fluid, which um, comes out, comes all over your skin, and it's there from birth. As a kid, it's perfect. You've got the perfect balance of it coming out, the sebum, versus skin cells being sloughed off the top, and that's why they all have such amazing skin. That acid mantle balance is perfection. As you go into puberty, that changes. Your sebaceous glands become overactive. Anytime um, adults get acne, they'll be doing the same thing. And then as you get older and you get to where I'm starting to get more worried about, which is aging, that scrotum sac, technically sebaceous gland, doesn't produce enough sebum. So you haven't got enough of your own oily covering coming out. Okay. So enough about scrotum sacs, back to the point, Kirsty. So that is where the oil, your natural oil, is coming from. The base theory is another oil, a good quality light plant oil, will take that off easily. Water-based cleansers, water bases and alcohols are not the solution for that. Plus, inherently, because they're stripping all of that sebum off, your sebaceous gland just goes, oh my God, I've got no oil, I need to make more. And literally, it is the most vicious circle of oil overly stripped off, skin produces more oil, <laughs> on and on and on. We need to stop that. And bringing in some of the right oils is going to be the answer. Now, I have a little kind of test to show you. Um, I need my mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall. Can you see my mirror? <laughs> so if you take, um, try this at home, take the brightest, reddest lipstick you can find. And fortunately, I didn't come with a bright red lipstick today. So I've got my kind of pinky lip gloss, which doesn't show as brilliantly as I was loving to. All makeup. Whatever you think, whatever it looks like, will have oil bases in it. It's kind of what makeup is. Two oily blobs of lipstick. If you take a normal cleanser, which I've popped some on here, which is a water-based cleanser, and start to rub it, can you see what's happening? Can you see that it just starts to smear around? That basically is you're putting a normal creamy paraffin liquid, which is the oil that will be in their cleanser, rubbing it around your face or a face wipe for that matter. And that is what the oil on your skin is doing. 
just basically starting to smear around. Exhibit two has some oil-based cleanser on. So oil-based cleansers, you can either buy them, they'll look like pure oils, or we have a lot of balm-based cleansers. Now what they start to do is wipe it straight off. So it's still smeary because you're on a mirror, but you can see that there's no color left there anymore. They basically break through it more quickly. So an oil will break down those oil molecules more quickly. And that, in a crazy mirror way, is kind of the science of it. There are other reasons why using oil-based cleansers, if you have an oily skin, are the first place to start. Do not, do not, do not, do not, do not be afraid of an oily base cleanser, whether it's a full oil cleanser or a balm cleanser, if you have acne, just don't. It's all the wrong way around. What you'll be terrified of is it looking oily because you think that matches the oil on your skin. What you'll do is use a white, creamy base cleanser that is full of paraffin liquid or mineral oil or petroleum oil, it will list as one of the three, and those nasty, cheap mineral oils will just be smearing it around your face and not removing it. Whereas if you went for the pure, proper oil, you'd be getting a good plant-based oil that will not block your pores, whereas the paraffin and the water-based one does block your pores. So actually, the reason I wanted to make this video is to clarify, when I say oil fights oil, you need to be careful of which oils if you're oily. Really, what we should be saying is you need to stay away from pore-clogging ingredients. And you should never presume that oils are pore-clogging. Just because you see pores clogged on your own face and you can see oil, that is not the same as what is in an oil bottle. So really what you're doing is you're trying to stay away from pore-clogging ingredients. And ironically, in the white creamy cleanser world that you feel secure and safe in, paraffin liquidum, mineral oil, petroleums, they are all pore clogging ingredients. Whereas if you head over to an, and I keep saying cleansers, this is gonna be the same as moisturizers. If you head over to a plant seed based oil world, that will not be the case. So the story stays the same as you go through cleansers all the way through to serums, and all the way through to moisturizers. It's about what is most likely to clog a pore. I know that's not the technical scientific way, but that's the way we all know and talk and think about it. So, I want to then tell you which oils are really, really good and won't do that, and flag up that there are some that will do that. So this is my caveat, really. When you hear me say it, just know that my background education, there is a lot more, <laughs> there's always a lot more information in there. So anything, any oil that is an occlusion, you may have heard me talk about occlusions before. These are like the really, really barrier, barrier type. So mango butter is the obvious one and shea butter as well. They could definitely used in a formula, either fully in the formula or as a very, very heavy part of the formula. Although they are plant oils, natural side, they would potentially be pore cloggers, okay? So maybe we don't want those ones. Wheat germ is the other one as well. Like anything that's incredibly heavy looking um, or thick or gloopy, so those are the occlusives, okay? So we probably don't want those ones. However, the other side of the natural and organic market of which there are many. So things like jojoba oil. Jojoba is amazing. It mimics sebum. So you remember when we were talking about the sebaceous gland? It mimics the natural substance. And it's why it's amazing for dry skins because it can help your skin feel like you've got a sebum layer, but it's also amazing for oily skins because it produces, um, it sits on the skin, goes into the skin and your sebaceous glands feel calmed because they don't need to produce any more oil because they think there's already oil there. So jojoba is definitely on the good list. Um, pumpkin seed, hemp, uh, grape seed. When you train to be a beauty therapist, grape seed you grow to hate very quickly because it's the thing that in colleges they make you use. It's always the cheapest oil, so it's the one they give you. 
actually, when you're in the organic market, grapeseed's expensive because there are not many organic vineyards. And so when there are not many organic vineyards, there are not many organic grapes. So actually, grapeseed becomes quite an expensive, rare seed oil. Those of you that like the technicalities, it's about oleic and linoleic acid. So some oils are rich in oleic acid, some oils are rich in linoleic acid when we're in plant seed world. And oily skins are believed to be low in linoleic acid. So typically, those with linoleic acid tend to work well for them, whereas those with lots of oleic, that is O-L-E-I-C, um, don't work quite as well. So the ones I just listed, um, like pumpkin, rose hip. So those I just listed, like pumpkin, rose hip, um, hemp, they are really good in linoleic acid. Rose hip's one of my absolute favorite. We use lots of it. Um, and they are on the go-to list. Things like a hoba as well. Whereas technically ones that are richer in oleic acid, like by that rule, probably sweet almond oil shouldn't be a go-to because it's got lots of oleic acid. So I suppose what I'm trying to say is it's a bit more complicated than my oil fights oil. There are some differences, but as long as you know you've got a good light plant oil, then you are good to go. As soon as, as, soon as it becomes occlusive and heavy, I would stay away from it as an oily skin, but if I was oily, I would be rushing to the other ones over the plain, cheap, white paraffin liquid creams that are normally on offer. And just a few other thoughts as to why using oily-based products on oily skins works well. Technically, when you have like an oilier moisturizer or an oilier cleanser, it actually spreads and disperses better on an oily skin because the oil will disperse nicely over the oil. So from a cleansing point of view, particularly, you get a much better cleanse. You get a much deeper cleanse. And lastly, oil, good quality light plant oils, are really anti-inflammatory. When you have a spot, goes without saying, if you think about it really, what is going on with that red mound is that all of the skin cells around there, all of the cells are massively inflamed and unhappy. So this is going to just like do your head in. But technically, if you got a massive spot and you were trying to get rid of it, the logical thing to do would be to be putting like a kind of cooling spot gel on like the kind of aloe vera, witch hazel, salicylic acid type gels, but letting that go on dry and then also covering that area in a really good quality, light plant facial oil. oil. Now, I know that will make most of you want to go running for the hills if you have spots, but if you literally kept repeating, like every half an hour, like the salicylic -y gel cooling witch hazel, facial oil all over, the difference it makes in terms of anti-inflammatory action of reducing the redness and anger in those, that cell area is incredible. Just promise me, just try it. Try it on one spot and let me know how it goes. Um, because it's pretty mind-blowing when you technically think of oil as being evil and what has caused that spot. Like, Acne, spots, blackheads, pimples, pustules, it's a bit more complicated than that. It's not just because you've got a tiny bit too much jojoba oil on your face. Um, that is not what caused it. So there you go. Give it a try. I want to know YouTube if any of you do it, and I want some before and after photos of that pimple and what we did in a 12, 24-hour process of doing spot cream and facial oil. Um, Thank you so much for listening. I hope I have given you a little bit more insight to Oil Fights Oil, and if acne and spots and oiliness are well on your radar and you want to know more then let me know give the video a thumbs up let me know in the comments what you want me to do 